The Swiss Dean Union is deeply concerned about the ongoing invasion and the recent developments in Ukraine. It notes that it is of great concern to all students. Hence, we decided to have a crisis talk together with the people who are actually affected and suffering from the ongoing invasion. Originally, we wanted to have this conversation live and stream it, but due to the ongoing bombings, we had to decide to record it. Nevertheless, to us, it's important that everyone learns how the students in Ukraine, those who fled, are doing, and how we can support them. As part of the Global Student Group, we stand for the right to study in a peaceful environment and show great solidarity with our Ukrainian fellows. Thanks for being with us. Moi, je suis Nadège Widmer et je suis la responsable des relations internationales de l'UNES. OK, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Kiro, chief of the UAS International Affairs Department. Um, I am actually bilingual, so I think for, for the purposes of this video, um, we can assume that one of my mother tongues is English. Cześć, nazywam się Janna i działam w Parlamencie Studentów Rzeczypospolitej Polskiej. Jestem członkinią Rady Wykonawczej, a do moich obowiązków należy dbanie o szeroko rozumiane sprawy międzynarodowe. Mój nazwa jest Dawid, jestem prezydentem tej Komisji dla Internacjonalnej Solidarności, Verband Szwicer Studierendeschaften i ich darf heute das Treffen moderieren. First, I would like to say my thanks to all of you and especially to you, Kirill, for being here with us today. And how are you? Like, how do you feel? Sirens literally just went off before the meeting. Uh, yeah, um, I was a little bit delayed um, because, as I said, Mr. Putin is probably listening to when we're going to have a recording to be certain to have some rockets sent my way so that I, I will be delayed. But, uh, I'm, I'm mostly okay. I say, well, I mean, as okay as you can be <laughs> in this kind of a situation. Um, the first couple of days were, of course, the hardest because, well, um, in the morning of February 24th, I had just, I would, I would be arriving soon in Kiev to pick up my godparents that stayed here. And we agreed with my family to get them out of there because we, we predicted there will soon be a war. And when I actually got the, the news, right, that the war has begun uh, and that I would probably be stuck in Kiev, I say stuck, please, then with my godparents. Uh, because of the air raids, the missile strikes, so I, I won't be able to easily get out, at least not in the first days. That was nerve-wracking, uh, I won't lie. I mean, I sit here smiling, but uh, yeah, I wasn't smiling for like the first couple of days. It was very difficult for me. Uh, a lot of conflicting thoughts, a lot of dark thoughts, a lot of thoughts provoked by stress, how this is going to turn out. Uh, will I even see how this is going to turn out? I have never expected anything like this to even happen. I mean, I know that the, the name of the game here is power politics, and I thought that would stop at politics and just projecting power and trying to leverage uh, with your power. But when it actually got down to using power to physically enforce uh, your policies that that was something i, I wasn't prepared for that uh life didn't prepare me for that so yeah the first couple of days were definitely the hardest now i mean again is it might sound a little bit wild at least especially to the people further west oh there you go see that the lights uh, start to uh Behave funny, uh, especially to the people out west. It might sound a little bit wild, but 
you get used to everything. So I, I kind of start noticing patterns with like air raids. I start noticing patterns with uh, artillery strikes because you can hear from where I am, you, you can hear um, the outskirts of Kiev being uh, shelled. So you, you kind of get the pattern, you get the general idea of what's going on. And uh, of course the human brain is programmed to find patterns, right, and to follow them. So it gets a little bit easier with time. But again, you know, you're not in an echo chamber. <clears throat> There's stuff going around you that prevents uh, you from adapting fully to the situation. So it, it's still pretty nervous, uh, pretty tense. Uh, however, I have a job to do. <laughs> so that keeps me from um, going completely ballistic. So yeah, right now, um, mo mostly uh, as normal as you can be, <laughs> I'd say. Thank you very much for sharing that with us and for your openness. As you probably know, we are flooded with information concerning the war, yet we know so little what the situation for students is in these circumstances. Could you tell us more about their situation and are you kind of able to reach them or maybe coordinate anything? So just as with me, the first couple of days, where the, 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 the hardest uh, against students, you know, it's not something we prepare for. We, we were just going about our studies. I have a diploma to write, for example, by my bachelor's uh, degree. I, have, I still have to write that. So I was going about planning how I will actually write the thing. And then, you know, the next day in the morning, the war started. So it threw everyone off, everyone were in shock. Um, the students, how are they doing? It depends mostly on the region. Uh, I suppose that's a good thing because, for example, although if you are further east, that's not exactly a good thing because the further east you are, of course, the closer you are to the border with the uh, Russian Federation as, as well as to the separatist regions. So for them, I suppose they were the most adapted ones out of us all because they were already or already living with a separatist uprising in Donbass for the last um, eight years. So they were probably the most adapted ones, but still, you know, uh, having a war come to your doorstep is not something you can really prepare for. You can think it through, you know, what would I do? Where would I go? Who would I contact? But when it hits, when it actually clicks, you, you can't prepare for that. So thankfully, and this is no credit of mine, but uh, thankfully the students rallied, rallied pretty quickly. The students, a lot of them went into the armed forces. They signed up for territorial defense. Uh, some who can't go because of a medical condition or whatever other personal reason they may have, they support uh, armed forces, they support the humanitarian relief efforts via internet. So for example, they may combat misinformation, they may spread uh, statements made by the Ukrainian government, they may relay to, the, they, they may act as a relay, for example, to their friends in Russia, uh, who are completely cut off from any kind of alternative opinion, right? So they have one opinion, the, the state one, and that's pretty much it. So the students' roles and what they can do, uh, they are plentiful. Mostly students are focusing on, again, I can't speak for the entire country. I don't have you know statistics for the country, but from what I hear and from what I know personally, they are either uh, fighting or they are uh, being they are volunteering to help relief efforts. So for example, in the West, uh, in for example, the city of Lviv, a lot of students from local uh, higher education institutions went to be volunteers, uh, translators, interpreters. So they, they, they help in refugee camps, they help the elderly, they help the children. So the, these are the primary areas around which students uh, base themselves right now. 
And of course, members of the Ukrainian Association of Students, we also uh, coordinate, uh, you know, we are spread all over the country, so we can coordinate effectively uh, where people are, what they need. And if, for example, something like a humanitarian aid convoy comes in that we happen to coordinate, we can send this aid more efficiently to the areas that need specific items because we probably have people there who tell that, okay, we, we need, for example, blankets and we need <clears throat> the first aid kits so we can distribute things more efficiently. Thank you very much. That is a lot, definitely. Uh, Joanna, I wanted to ask you, uh, we have heard, seen pictures of people crossing the border from Ukraine to Poland and standing in incredible long lines to get through. And most Ukrainians seem to leave the country towards Poland, also the other neighboring countries, but I think Poland is the main arrival place. Can you tell us more about the situation on the Ukrainian-Polish border? Uh, yes, of course. Mm, the situation is very dynamic, so I will try to give a um, short uh, outline about this. So in the past few days, uh, more than half a million um, Ukrainian citizens crossed our border, and there was mainly women with children, uh, and there was like like on this border, numerous of our services are working 24 hours per day. Border guards, police, uh, fire brigade, medical assistance, but there are like hundreds or even thousands of volunteers, like people who just came back from home to help uh, Ukrainian people. But it's worth mentioning that uh, there are like many Ukrainians who are coming back to their, to their homeland. So uh, it is said that around or more than 100,000 citizens came back to fight for uh, independent Ukraine. So it's also a big number. So about the legal issues, because you mentioned that they're like very long lines. Yes, uh, legal issues have been greatly simplified. So to cross the border, Ukrainian citizens just need a passport or an ID. But even though uh, the lines are very, very long, because so many people uh, would like to be a refugee and go to a, to the to the different country so more and more people are working on the board however it's like still too too many people uh, and first thing is to cross the border um, but the second thing is to have a safe place to stay so on the border like many transport organized and those transport are by buses private one but also the, the one organized by our government a trains and private cars many people uh, from different cities in Poland came to, to places on, on the board and like taking three, four people to the car and taking them uh, to their private houses. So like people are helping however and whenever they, they can. And it's also worth to mention that the trains are free for all the Ukrainians. So when the Ukrainian cross the border, they can go to the train and go whether he got the information he have a safe place and it's very important for us to create those safe places because uh, on the east side but also in poland it's cold outside so it's like around in the in the night it's like below zero during the day it's like maybe five uh, degrees of celsius so they really need a place to have safe place and food uh, but uh, yes, so I think that that's the situation look like, and we are doing whatever we need uh, to create those um, space for them to cross the border. So many students in Switzerland are wondering, what can I do? How can I help? And Poland has a big history of solidarity, and I think you've shown it again. And I would like to know how are Polish students ex expressing solidarity towards Ukraine right now? So we are doing this in um, various ways because uh, the help you can provide is also different in the different parts of our country. When you are living uh, like very close to the border, you can help during, uh, during some transport transportations or other stuff. But first of all, uh, our uh, Polish student parliament of the Republic of Poland, but also at each university, so the student council on each university, wrote a statement of supporting Ukrainians and uh, concerning the Russian and uh, saying that the Russian attack was bad. 
uh, and uh, also we started having some human hum so actions to collect many things for Ukrainians. But also, if someone can afford, I don't know, to buy something for Ukrainians, they can just change the um, photo on Facebook or uh, some send some pictures to others or just write uh, that he's solidarity with the Ukrainian people. Uh, we also, as a student parliament, we are staying in touch with the Ukrainian Student Association so that we know what they need. And each university is collecting many things. And those things are um, like uh, some long-term food, hygiene products, cleaning products, sleeping bags, and so on and so on. So uh, people, they can buy whatever they they need and then we are packing it collecting and and sending to the border and from the border it's going by trains uh, to ukraine but also many things are giving to the people who are crossing the border one more thing is also what we are doing as an organization our president matos brochowski uh, had like many meetings with our ministry of education and science uh, because uh, Kirill told us that lots of students from ukraine would like to continue their study so uh, we had a success and our ministry and the polish national agency for academic exchange prepared a huge project allowing students to continue their studies in poland for free so that they can uh, when they cross the border they are refugees uh, they can pick the university and everything is going to be for free and it's going to be for free for the whole cycle. So if someone is going to study, I don't know, five years because it's a law, then we are going to pay for it for five years. And in addition, we also support students uh, with the psycho psychological support and Polish language courses and everything is free of charge. Uh, but also there's one more thing um, we need to mention about uh, helping how students can help. Uh, first of all, in Poland, we have lots of Ukrainian students, uh, so we are taking care of them. We are asking how they are feeling, if they need anything like food or some other support, or even they need to have a hug or watch a movie with us on Netflix. And the same we are doing also with the Polish students. Uh, two days ago, there was a huge action because one of the students from our university, he was Ukrainian. He was murdered during the war because he came back and he was killed. And lots of his friends was like crying because of it. So we also are taking care of our Polish students to and ask them how they are feeling. And I think that it's a very good uh, and important thing, even in Switzerland, to ask your colleagues how they are feeling about the war, if they need any support. So just like we can be like together during the, this very difficult and tough time. And the success uh, of support is when you are not doing something alone, but as a team, as an organization, as a family or whatever. So uh, if you are going to do something, try to collect things with, with a group of friends or people, and then uh, probably your government which will prepare any actions for it or if, if you don't want to buy something or you think that it's going if you would like to just send an, an financial support it's also okay we also have in Poland many many funds for it and probably in each country it is thank you very much I'm sure Swiss students are also interested in what has been happening from our side in Switzerland Nadesh, could you could I ask you to tell us what acts of solidarity have been expressed by the Swiss Student Union? Yes, of course. Um, well, first, Fawas, as Unis Uzu has expressed um, in the very beginning, there's a lot of solidarity with Ukrainian students and the entire Ukrainian population. And once again, I would like to express our solidarity with, in these difficult times. Um, what has been done so far uh, is that we supported and spread out the statement that was issued by the European Students Union in collaboration with uh, GSF and uh, UAS. Um, so we want to really show our support and show that um, we as students also can do something and can um, make this issue like at the very top of the scene of the media. Uh, so that it's put also pressures on our governments. Um, we, with that, we also stayed in close contact um, with ESU, with the Ukrainian Students Union and with different uh, unions 
I, I think there has been a great show of solidarity uh, within all the different unions uh, across Europe um, and trying to organize um, and collaborate and coordinate what can be done, what different initiatives are being um, set up throughout the, the continent. Um, and also we then also published our own um, publication from the students uh, of Switzerland, uh, where we called on our government to take a clear position and condemn the invasion from, uh, from the Russian Federation. And also asked that the fleeing students um, are provided with the aid they need and that the Swiss government offers possibilities to, to have refuge, um, shelter to stay, but also very importantly for us is that they can have a safe environment to allow them to further their studies in Switzerland. Um, and I cannot stress that enough. Um, and I guess up until now, um, we, we tried to spread out um, information about uh, the different initiatives popping up in our country to send help uh, or even small initiatives that are um, taking from uh, students and how everybody can help in their own very, very way. Um, so yeah, I guess for the moment, um, it's been a lot of coordination with other unions and, and I really hope that it's gonna continue that way. And I think we have a lot of power if we do, as Joanna stated, a work as a team. Thanks, and could you also tell us what the next actions will be? Yes, um, currently we are working on a, an appeal to the Swiss government um, in order to offer assistance for refugees coming from Ukraine. Um, so we have different demands. Um, the idea is really to show that um, we can, even in Switzerland, even we're not at the border, there are gonna be, um, we can help in our own way and we need to offer this assistance. Um, we, in our demands, we demand that there uh, has offers of scholarships and grants um, towards Ukrainian students that are incoming in Switzerland. So that, um, as I mean, uh, Joanna stated and Kirill also stated that some students want to just further their studies and we, we have the place, we have the possibility to offer those, those, um, those students the right to education, right? To uh, protect that right. Um, so we also demanded the access to education that, that it is facilitated um, and that these students can just continue their studies. Um, so we want that there are those, there are programs that are set up um, to facilitate that and to um, allow anybody who wishes um, to find that safe environment uh, that will allow them give the right conditions to study again. Um, and finally, we also appeal the Swiss students, but the Swiss population more generally uh, for donations, for any kind of um, that it financial or humanitarian uh, aid, um, that anything can be done to help in any way um, and anything that can be sent um, to all the Ukrainian population, what is needed. Um, yeah, I, I guess um, it's also, we're gonna, gonna see uh, how everything turns out in the next few days. Of course, it's, it's always difficult to find the right information. There's a lot of misinformation as well, um, but we, we wanna stress those three points um, of helping students and generally the Ukrainian population as, as best as we can. Joanna and Kirill, as you now have heard what has been done so far and will, will come from our side in Switzerland, I'd like to ask you, what else can we as a student union do? Ladies first. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I think that uh, you as an organization, you can always uh, lobbying something for your government because it's right now it's like uh, very important to help those uh, people to come through the borders and start sometimes a new life or help them 
uh, to come back to their homeland. So uh, I think that also is very important to prepare some activities for the children because right now the borders can cross only mothers with children. So for example, our students are uh, preparing some activities, some uh, some some fun for them, and some uh, board games just to uh, just to just like them can forget about the war and have like like a like normal childhood because Putin like wanted to gave it away away from them. So thank you, and that's your turn, Kirill. Uh, well, the larger Western community is in a precarious position right now. <clears throat> it is at a crossroads because Europe has not seen uh, a war in quite a while, uh, which is, of course, a great thing. But it also leads to some unexpected uh, issues that might pop up regarding the regarding the population and how the population reacts to what is happening uh, in Ukraine. So I think what you should focus on, you being the Swiss Union, but also people from well, wherever they are who watch this, uh, you should focus on, first of all, calming down. So you have to look at the situation with a, with a clear and cool head. Because if you are going to be um, wherever you are again, spreading panic, spreading uh, misinformation, it's not going to help anyone. This is only going to harm other people who will catch up onto your misinformation. And so this is going to be a snowball effect. So you need to calm down. You need to realize that the Ukrainian armed forces have been building up and modernizing for these past eight years and that they are doing everything they have to do in order to protect the sovereignty of Ukraine. You as students, uh, I encourage you, I urge you to, again, calm down and to relay whatever information comes out. So for example, from us or from, the, from our Polish friends or from your own unions, you should stay up to date and you should spread that kind of information uh, well, across as many people as you can. Be an information bridge. Stay up to date. Watch over your Ukrainian neighbors, your Ukrainian friends. Uh, watch over them. Keep in touch with them. As Joanna said, provide support for them because, again, the situation is was unexpected and it is tragic what is happening right now. Above all else, it is a great tragedy. And with Ukrainians spread all over the world, right, from Canada to Japan, you have to, it is your moral obligation to support people whose motherland is currently experiencing a tragedy. I count on you being good people. I count on you being morally reliable people. And I hope that the European and the wider global community will help Ukrainians, at least when it comes to students, uh, to help Ukrainians deal with this tragedy psychologically, to tell them that everything is going to be all right, that justice is going to be done. If not tomorrow, then in a year or in five years, everything is going to be okay. You, ha you have to do this, otherwise, uh, this tragedy is going to spread through the people's minds all across the world, and you will have you will have an outcry that nothing good is going to come of that. So support your Ukrainian friends, neighbors, whatever, acquaintances. Support them, relay information to them. Uh, support Ukrainians directly if you can, with material, with uh, financial aid humanitarian relief support. All of it is greatly appreciated. None of it is forgotten. And all of your support is going to the relevant well, points of interest. Wh wherever your help is needed, it will go there. But again, I wanted to stress that the global community needs to focus 
on helping Ukrainians feel as part of that community. So what Joanna said, it is always easier to suffer together, so to speak. That is a very Christian thing to do. Suffering together is something we all have to do right now. You have to understand that this is a tragedy. You have to understand why it came to this. And you also have to understand that if you won't help to deal with this tragedy, who's to say you are going to be helped when you are in the same, you know, hour of need? Help people. Be a good test. Thank you. And as a last question, is there anything you want to give to the individual student in Switzerland or, as you say, anywhere in the world that feels kind of powerless right now in, in how to help as an individual? Um, yes, it is easy, which is kind of paradoxical in the modern world, which is so interconnected, to feel, especially in these troubling, tragic, and worrying times to feel isolated. It, it is quite a paradox, again, considering how interconnected we all are. I mean, we are having this discussion right now. Uh, how can an individual help? Again, as I said, be an information bridge. Stay up to date. Update your loved ones, update your family. Make certain that whomever you come in contact with is not affected by uh, misinformation spread by Russia. Again, uh, I personally have nothing against the Russian people and, and the Russian Federation in general, but you know the sides are pretty clear right now. So you are either spreading misinformation, unfortunately, or you are spreading the official statements of the Ukrainian government as well as of other European governments who corroborate whatever we say. So these are your choices. Um, in, in these times, it's quite black and uh, black and white, unfortunately. You are not powerless. <laughs> so this is the first thing you have to realize. You're not powerless. It only seems that way. It seems that way because in the words of Neville Chamberlain, it is a faraway country of which we know little. I understand that mentality. I had that mentality for quite a while in regards to many countries, in regards to many situations around the globe myself. But now, when war has come to my doorstep, all of a sudden, I feel a need for support, right? All of a sudden, I'm the one who is feeling alone and isolated. So you in the West, in the further West out there, you have to realize before it is too late, right? I know it sounds kind of gloomy, but before it is too late, you have to realize that you are not powerless. You can help just by being there, if anything, just by being there, by going to um, any kind of public action, right? Going on strikes, well, don't go on strikes. I mean, go out in the streets, support Ukrainian students, at least in this way, you are showing that the Ukrainian people and students in particular are not alone and that the, the wider community is aware of their plight and stands with them in solidarity. This is what we are doing right now, solidarity. This is our primary method of support, moral support. It may seem like an insignificant addition to the effort, but when you are on the receiving end of this solidarity, of the show of solidarity, it does make quite a difference. It shows to you that people look on you, right? You are in the spotlight. You are not forgotten about, you are not alone, which is the primary thing we have to combat right now. So don't make Ukrainians feel alone because who knows when you will be feeling alone and the Ukraine just might come around and uh, you know make you feel needed again. I would just add one more thing that we, Sometimes we forgot how value is freedom. And uh, we also are very lucky as a young people that we are living in the times where like not, no war, no first or second world war. We are living in a peacetime. And right now there's a 
huge war in in Europe, and it might be even go go through the Europe like from east to the west to west. So right now, being a uh, one who is solidarity with others, and the one who is going to support other country because they're not going to be free anymore if we don't support them, is right now is like a moment to to check, like saying check to myself if I'm going to be a human person and help other people. I, I, I see it this way. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much. It is nice to hear about all the wonderful things that are happening as acts of solidarity in face of this incredible tragic event. Thank you all very much for your participation and your statements. I hope everyone who listens to you feels empowered to act and help however they can. So Kirill, I think you want to make a last appeal. Please do so. People of Europe, <laughs> it has been quite a while since any nation has encountered a tragedy of this level. And I keep stressing that this is a tragedy of not only a national level, but of an international one. Because not only is Ukraine under attack, but it is the global European values that are under attack as well. The European community is under attack as well, Ukraine, for quite some time, and the stretch is far beyond 2014. This is this stretch is centuries ago. Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, because Ukraine wasn't a thing like centuries ago, but the Ukrainian people were. The Ukrainian people are a part of the European family. It has been a long time coming that something like this is bound to happen. This occurs, th these kinds of tragedies occur, unfortunately, quite regularly. It is going to be quite some time, now that I look back at, at, at the whole situation, it is going to be quite some time until we arrive at like uh, the Star Trek reality of the Earth being united and there will be no war anymore. Uh, until we arrive at that point, people have to understand that the entire world is a community. And what Russia is doing right now, what President Putin is doing right now, is ruining that community. He is ruining all the ties that we have constructed over the years. And it is important that if Ukraine is not only to stay free, but if it also to stay a part of the European community and the wider global community, the whole family has to come together. So as I said, you are not powerless to act. You have to act because if you won't, you will basically let the dictators get away with this stuff. You will show them that yes, you are doing something, but really you're not doing anything. This will show them in their own lost ways that they can get away with this. Who's to say, you know, Moldova is not next. Who's to say Romania is not next. So we have to come together to make Ukraine an example, raise it up and make it an example of unity, of that show of unity that Europe hasn't had a chance of actually demonstrating. Now is the time to act. We are talking about solidarity a lot, right? Now is the time to show that solidarity. Now is the time to demonstrate that the European Union, that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization are more than just names, that the European community is more than just a name. Oh, you know, we are part of the European family. Okay, yeah, sure. Now is the time to demonstrate that. Show that, show that, and any any nation, be it Ukraine, be it whomever, will see that and they will appreciate that because they will see that your words are backed up by action. 
and they will repay you. You will be repaid for your solidarity tenfold by Ukrainians who will stay in your countries, who will become a part of your country, and who will have generations of people thanking each individual European country for their contribution, and who will thank this enormous show of solidarity that I hope will happen, a physical show of solidarity that I hope will happen. They will thank it, and they will be confident that the future of Europe is secured because the people of Europe have demonstrated for the first time since the end of the Second World War that they are united, that they don't want anyone treading on European soil. Action time, people. It's time, it's time to act.